he be chilling. How he be chilling like Bro, that? life is really simple, man. Break you it know, down, man. No, we make it hard. It's yo, it's certain principles. All right, so we all okay, but for the people right. listening, because somebody might be like, "Well, what you talking about, man? What you?" No, nah, but like, just, so, just so just living life. Period. Like, if you do certain basic things, life can be simple. We go out our way to make it hard for ourselves. Our wants start to take over, start to outweigh our needs. Like little stuff like that. If you really focus on your needs more than your wants, life will be easier. You don't always got to entertain certain things or try to get validation from others if you got it within yourself. How you even know I need to hear that, man? Uh, hey, look. How you you asked me how I, how I yeah. appear to be so peaceful and chill and serene. I needed this. That was for me, y'all. That one just for y'all. That one was for me. Yeah, man. Self-validation. Yeah. That's more important. Like, focus on your needs more than your wants. <laughs> Before we go any further, take a second to hit that subscribe button. Don't make it complicated. I'm not asking for any money. I'm not asking for no tabs, no offering. <laughs> Just hit the subscribe button. If, if you've paid attention to any of the content, I think it's been valuable. And I've gotten a lot of good feedback. So hit that button so you'll get notifications when the podcast posts. All right, today we got another special guest. I know I said that the last few times, but this is another special guest. Um, a young brother that I'm inspired by, even though I'm a few, just a few years older than him, I'm inspired by his mindset, by the moves that he makes, and by the information that he presents. Um, I don't like to just bring on people that I'm not familiar with. I like to bring on people that I've had conversation with and I've had these type of talks with off camera, but I felt they're valuable to have some on camera too. Um, he's done several things. I won't try to run through all of them, but he's done music, apparel, um, photography, went to college. He's done several things. I'm going to let him get into more of that, but I have here today with me none other than Mr. Desmond Robinson, also known as D85. Uh, thank you yes, for sir. having me, my brother. Thank yes, you sir. For Appreciate having you for coming, man. No doubt. All right. I'm going to start at the beginning. Um, yeah. Your background, where you from? Some of us in the area know you, but I hope hoping this goes out to the millions. Yeah, man, I'm from the big city of Emporia. No, I'm just <laughs> Come on with it. Yeah, man, I'm from Emporia. You know what I mean? Just like yes, yourself. Um, I grew up on around Northwood Village, okay. aka the project. The project. That's what they call. Um, grew up in a single parent household. My mom raised me and my two brothers. Right. Uh, dad spent a lot of my life uh, incarcerated. Okay. So it wasn't too many male figures. You know what I mean? Present, just my mom, my two brothers, and all the fellas that, that was around the way. Um, right. We kind of, in a way, we kind of raised ourselves coming up, but okay. we took care of one another, protected one another, learned from one another. Things like that, man. So, yeah, I grew up in Emporia, um, attended all my schooling in Emporia, mm -hmm. there Emporia Elementary. Yeah, yeah. Wait, no. Started at a training school. That's where I went to uh, preschool at. Yeah, then go to preschool, okay. Then Zion, that was kindergarten. Then so Emporia you switched up, okay. Yeah, it's all it's Zion all different now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poirier Elementary, you know what I mean? For uh, first and third, back. Hicks Ford, Belfield, Wyatt, yeah, high school. High school yep. And then off the Shaw University, man. That's that's why I ended my educational, my formal educational learning. Journey. Okay, what you study there? Uh, recreational studies with a minor in psychology. Okay, and that led you into the occupation. That you uh, really coincide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um the professional work field, which okay. would be uh counseling, okay. human services, things like that. Yeah. All right, all right. Now, okay, going back to what you said, with your father being incarcerated, mm -hmm. 
most of your life. Mm -hmm. From that early age up until the point you just said, what even inspired you or what did you see that motivated you to even say after high school, let me move away and try something different. Let me go to college. Got you. Um, well, I always had that, that big imagination. So most of my summers were spent in Southeast DC. My mom would send me up there okay. with my aunt, you know what I mean? Or, or my cousin or my uncles. So I spent a lot of my childhood summers in DC. So you had exposure to something. Else yeah. So, so to see a bigger city, you know what I mean? Than what Emporia offers. Right. I was already kind of exposed to that right, and right. kind of saw that, I, you know what I mean? I knew that I wanted to experience something different as an adult. That wasn't too foreign for you. Yeah, that wasn't too foreign right. for me. So okay. when it was time to pick a college, um, Shaw is just right down there in Raleigh. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's not too far from here, but it's a bigger it's city. It's far than enough away. Right. And with me spending my summers in D.C. and going whichever holidays in D.C., I saw how the city the city, what the city life is like. It moves, yeah. It ain't, it ain't too fast for me now coming from a small town like this. So I know how to catch the uh, the bus, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, the metros and mm -hmm. things like that. So, yeah, I, I knew that I wanted to go somewhere different. Like, that's a little faster pace and a little more opportunity. Okay. At what age did you realize, okay, you had some type of creative spark? Because it was, as long I haven't known you personally from a child up, mm -hmm. But as long as I've known you, which has been some years now, you've always had a creative mind, a innovative mind, a forward thinking mind. Gotcha. What's the earliest age you remember saying you wanted to do something, regardless Let's of what see. it was? Well, all right. So <laughs> I thought I was going to the NBA. Like, okay. I, I was sure. I think most of us <laughs> that I was going to the NBA. <laughs> I mean, growing up, where we where we from, man? Like, so I spent a lot of time down in CYC. Okay. Um, okay. Daycare was there when I was little, okay. and then when I was around five, I learned how to swim because we used to go to the to the pool all the okay. time. And you know, back then they would throw a little kid into the pool. <laughs> so you, and I mean, they ain't gonna let nothing bad happen yeah, to I mean, you. Yeah, but that's, you learn how to swim as a child. Your instincts going, you know, what I mean, help you stay afloat. Right. So I learned how to swim back then. So I guess that's where the athleticism had first kicked in. That as a okay. as a small child. Right. Um, and then that probably grew to just going to the basketball court, which is also down the rack. And uh, just shooting around and playing. And my mom had signed me up for EGRA at a young age. So I played mm -hmm. basketball with a lot of my peers. And as we um, started moving up in different schools, got to middle school, tried out for basketball. I was red shirted. I ain't even front like okay. I was the superstar on the I team. I ain't even made the team, my brother. But, did. Um, yeah, so I played a little bit of basketball. I did some practice sessions, things like that. Got to high school. I was redshirted my first year. Then I made it sophomore year. I didn't come, I didn't stay on the basketball team. Um, I didn't get into all the details of all that. But I ain't stay on the basketball team. I ended up going to marching band. Right. Um, I always had a love for music, obviously. Um, so from there, man, I was on the I was in the percussion section, and just able to really express my artistic. You know, what I mean, to show my artistic expression through music. You know, okay. and even back then, you know, all the fellas would freestyle mm -hmm. at the lunch table or right, on right, the bus right, right, right. or wherever we are. So just music, man, that 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 really sparked the the creative spark. So was that when you got into doing music, or you had started prior to that? Um, nah, maybe high school with the little freestyling. I wasn't serious with it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I think everybody was just freestyling yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just getting serious with it was later on, like. Like probably right after high school, like going into college. Okay. When I when I got to college, I really tried. I really started to find who the artist in me was. You know what I'm saying? Who I was as an artist. And that's the, that's part of what I'm getting into. Just the mindset that that develops over time. Yeah. So okay. So so before college, it mm -hmm. was it was all mystery. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Me me and the guys was out here wild. Okay. That's that's, that's pretty weird. much what it was as as young. Um, we didn't have no guidance, you okay. know what I'm saying? So youth with no guidance, nobody really showing us right from wrong in a small town with no opportunities. <clears throat> so question, what made you not take that to college when you left? Because if you had been doing that, that's a part of you, or at least a part of your daily activity or your regular routine. What made you not or did you? <laughs> that's I see the way you were looking at me. <laughs> you say, look, I, hey, look, man. <laughs> The, the mindset, some of the mindset did follow me there, which if you went to a black college or know anything about co black college, especially uh, 
sports and marching band of all things. I know people look at band and like, oh, I have yeah, no I. idea, man. So black college marching band, you got to have a little bit of that in you. You can't be soft. Because ain't no soft people in there, especially the percussion set. Well, not the whole band. The whole band. It ain't no soft but people in there. especially the percussion yes, section. So sir. I had to take some of it with me. I ain't even front. Uh, did I get in any trouble? No. Okay. Um, was it channeled in a more positive way or a useful way? Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I took a little bit of it with me. Now, being in the college setting, though, you do learn that. You learn what's acceptable and what's not. Right. Okay. So I think before I got into that environment, we knew right from wrong, but focusing on what's acceptable and what's not, that wasn't the main focus. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. I think we always was out here surviving at first. Mm-hmm. Then when you get into a uh, into an environment with people from different places, uh, you're exposed to different opportunities, things like that, you start to mold and shape yourself or you can get left you by the wayside. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so... At what point did you start like your first business venture, like trying to put something together that would prepare you to a different level outside of just working a job? Got you. So while in college, you know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying you asked when I start taking music seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, college really helped me with that. That opened up opportunities for me to start really getting some exposure and learning how to book my shows and things like that. Um, I was one of those artists. That's on campus passing out all my CDs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If I can iron on some words on a shirt mm-hmm. and pass those out too. Okay. Now I'm into merch. I didn't know what merch you didn't even know that's what you were doing. Was. Yeah, okay. it was back then, but I do know I grew up around the hustlers mentality. And that's kind of what helped me climb climb the ladder in the entertainment world. Okay. Um so it was business being done. Was it the best business? Probably not, but it was business. Um, so booking my shows, um, selling selling CDs, uh, things like that. That was probably like my first introduction to entrepreneurship. Okay. You did know what I'm saying? Like I had jobs. I've been working since I was 15, to eight months. Got a learner's permit, so I did work at the local fast food restaurants and things like that. Okay. But as far as putting my own money up, getting some legal products, mm-hmm. and and making some money back off it. It probably was college, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Selling, selling music and merchandise. All right, because I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with the with the discussion. All right. So, after that section, because you continued music, mm-hmm. um, I know you started off, and you don't have to explain the whole thing, but you had, was it Fast Money Digital? Mm-hmm. I started Fast Money Digital. Okay. That was the brand, the umbrella that we was under. Um, I did license it as an LLC. Okay. Um, so that I can track the money that me and, me and the guys was making. Right. Things like that. So, yeah, that's okay. probably, that's the first business venture that I, I that I took a shot at. Okay, then I'm going I'm to move forward to, okay, 2016. You put out your last album that you put out. Man. Yeah. It was 2016. Yeah. I didn't even realize it was that long ago. Very, very dope album. Appreciate it. But at that point, you started getting into more and more merch. You mm-hmm. might have done some before that, but I know you started incorporating more merch and things of that nature with that. That sounded about right. Uh, nah, because the Forever Line probably was a couple years before that. It was before that? Yeah, I think that was probably around like 2014. Okay. Yeah, probably like 2014, 2015 at the latest. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we can progress forward because I want to get into some other deeper talks. Mm-hmm. Now what you're doing mm-hmm. is totally different than what you were doing for all those years. You know, as far as music goes. Yes, I know. Okay, explain. Because Eagle Vision Photography, Eagle Vision Apparel, mm-hmm. and whatever else you might have. I don't know everything else you might have going mm-hmm. on. So explain that then. All right, so uh, Eagle Vision. Eagle Vision Apparel. Well, Eagle Vision Creations is the LLC. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's the umbrella. So the subdivisions from that is... Eagle Vision Apparel, Eagle Vision Photography, and we had started Eagle Vision Music Group, mm. but I stopped dealing with music. Doing music. You know right. what I'm saying? But I mean, it's still there, it's still open if we decide to go back in that direction. But apparel and photography. Well, we're going to back, back up. Do you want to discuss why you stopped doing music? Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, so let's talk about it. Because the reason I asked, 
in my opinion, you put out a very, very good album. Mm -hmm. Very good album. And then you just stop. I would think after putting out an album that, you know, you got songs on the radio. Right. And that's a pretty big deal because everybody right. can't get their song to the radio. You no, know, my first time, my the first time my music was played on the radio was 2007. Right, okay. Um, even after my last album, Switching Lanes, went into 2017, I believe. Mm -hmm. That's a solid 10-year run with at least one single on the radio every year. Wow, that's... A lot of people can't say that. Even superstars, you know what I'm saying, can't say that. Yeah. I mean, well, local radio, of course, and 99.5, they showed me a lot of love, so yeah. I really appreciate everything CJ and 321 and D-Train and them did for me. Even back to DJ Slice, because he was the first one that played the first E-Town anthem up there in 2007. Wow. So from then, they they were showing me love. Okay. But even getting to that point, it was a lot of work put into it, you know what I'm saying? I was showing up to to little parties that 99.5 would do for the kids, little Kitty Hops team parties and mm -hmm. things, and I'd go there just to give them a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? They stream that shoes, furniture, food line. I pop up there and give them a mixtape. Okay. Like so, it was a lot of groundwork with mine. I ain't really had an internet like people got now. Right, right, right. Um, right, right. I was around when it shifted to the internet, and you know, what I mean, I adapted. Made it easier, but it was a lot of groundwork with D85s come up. Okay. So, like I said, it was a lot of work put into it, and it was a lot of uh, one man work put into D85. Okay, so question. With it being more groundwork then and it seemingly being easier to get it done now. I didn't say it was easier, but it's different. No, okay. But to some degree, I think it's easier to get it out there. It may not be easier to make it pop. Yeah, it's harder to stand up. Yeah, but it's easier nowadays to get it out there. Um, I'm going to let you continue. Continue with what you just said. Gotcha. So, um, just put in the work. It, like I said, it was easy to stand out back then because all you had to do was outwork everybody. Okay. Um, I feel like I put in a lot of countless hours just to get the proper exposure as an independent rapper. I never had a manager. Right. I never had a record deal. I never had nothing behind me. It was all me. It's your grind. It was just all me. Uh, my money went into recording the music. My money went into the graphic art, pressing the CDs, all that good stuff. So, I did all of that. Um... I could never really find the help I needed to take it to the next level. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I made it as far as I made it just off of a lot of what sleepless nights and right. what I can do. And I, I feel like I, I made it. I reached my goal. I was going to say for one person to be doing that and still get to where you got, that's big, man. Yeah, I mean, I reached my goal. Okay. Can't be mad at that then. So when you ask why, why did I stop? You reached your I goal. I reached my goal, yeah. So it made it easy to pivot to just start something. Well, you say it's not totally different. So explain how what you're doing now with the photography and everything. Artistic expression. I'm an artist at heart. I like expressing myself Creative through art. Creator. That's right. So create. I just that's that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being in the recording studio, now you I'm in the photography studio, um, and I still get to express myself artistically. So it's the same thing. Okay. And I'm still moving along with the times, the digital times, the social media and things like that. I can still put my art out there. And it's respected. The longevity in that is is, is, is better. And it's, I'm sure it's a lot less stress. It is a lot less stress. Okay. It's a whole lot less stress. I, yeah, it's a whole lot less stress. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to be on the scenes that I used to be, have right. to be on. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm cool anywhere I'm at, but I prefer low stress environments and you have a little more control well a lot more control over the environments now mm -hmm. to a lot of degree okay yeah. all right let's let's get into some business talk mm -hmm. you being a, a business minded man we're just gonna talk some basics what's some of the first things or yeah the first things a person should do when they are starting a business create a plan um know what you want out of the business Know what you want the business to be and okay. what you want from the business. Okay. It, but go into that a little bit more. All right. Because so, to me, that makes sense. I got you. So, you know what I'm saying? What, why do you want a business? What What is your purpose for a business? For instance, a lot of people say, I'm tired of clocking in. I'm tired of going to work for somebody else. Right. I'm going to start a business. And then they just jump out there and do it. 
just because they don't want to go to work at somebody else's company. Right. And that's fine because at some point you're gonna you're gonna realize if it's for you or not. And a lot of times you realize it's not for everybody. Yeah, business owning a business or entrepreneurship entrepreneurships looks and sounds a lot cooler than it really is. It's one of the most in my experience at least, it's one of the most emotional things you can do because yeah. some days it's gonna be way up here and mm-hmm. it's working, everything clicking mm-hmm. like oh I'm doing, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm rich. Then, well, I'm rich. <laughs> then the next day, you yeah, can, you can look around like, Y'all gonna do this to me? Yeah. Like er- like yeah, dried up. Like, man, did I make the right decision for real? For real, I, I might need to go clock in. <laughs> yeah, for real. And you, you have to weather that storm to see. Okay, that's when you decide what's in you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't have that in them to even jump out there. Yeah, you jump out there, but the, the wolves gonna tear you up. Yeah. So keep going, man. I ain't see, I ain't gonna front though. So like a lot of times, like I like multiple streams of income, and that don't mean that I'm personally. General, like establishing these things for most working two jobs is multiple streams of income. I know it ain't the ideal way of living, but okay. that's two streams of income. Right. If I'm selling shirts, selling music, and work a job, that's three streams. That's three streams. I just got to figure out how to manage it. You okay. know what I'm saying? Right. So it's nothing wrong with create finding what you enjoy doing, and if you can find a way to get some money out of it. Do that while you have a job and do it until you can switch the roles. So when your hobby is no longer your part-time job, I mean, that can become your full-time and then right. you can go part-time at your full-time job and then eventually let that go if that's what you want to do. Right. But if you absolutely love your job, keep your job. And if you want to find you like a little side venture, do that too. But don't just say, yo, I'm tired of clocking in. I'm about to go start a business because trust me, that don't get more stressful than just going to work every day. I was gonna say for maybe the first couple of days you gonna have that relief because whew, I ain't got to get up and clock in. You still got the anxiety because you don't got the safety net on you. But what I'm saying, but that first couple of days you you don't it don't hit you yet because you might. I feel you. you just because I ain't had to get up at six o'clock this morning. Whew. Um. Second day, but by the third day you yeah. probably gonna be like, I need to be up at midnight until midnight. Yes. Until I figure this out. Right, that's why I said. it's all on me You got to have a plan, though. You okay. know what I mean? Know what you want your business to be and so what I you want to okay. get out of it. So what does a plan look like? Okay. You know what I'm saying? To not get, like, go too far left, pretty much know, okay, what do you enjoy doing? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's one thing. You got to enjoy what the actual business is. Okay. You also got to know what role you're going to play in the business. Um, You can't just have the title of a boss. You can you can, but you got to have like some extreme people skills and know how to really manage people. That's another thing. Can you manage people? Is your business going to require you to manage people or are you going to do all the work? And if not, like you said, that goes into a higher level. Some of these other people that have started businesses, mm-hmm. they'll step down and hire a CEO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, for sure. I know recently a lot of people trip when, um, was it uh, Jeff Bezos mm-hmm. hired a CEO? Step down and let somebody else be CEO. Right. And people threw a fit, but they didn't. Some people didn't consider that maybe he just was either exhausted with doing that particular job, mm-hmm. or maybe he just wasn't good at what needed to be done going forward. And say, okay, you do it now. Okay, I that's a possibility. That. Yeah. I Not that. saying that that's what happened, but right. that's a people don't consider that. Right. So keep it. Uh, but yeah, you got to know those type of things, and can you even manage a business? You know what I'm saying? Can you manage the flow of money properly? Yeah, do you manage your money good now? Do you manage your money good now? Um, are you going into business in debt? That got to be a part of your plan. Are you going to try to set yourself free financially before you jump out there? Not even jump out there. Even with the job you have now, are you working that job just to go to work and pay your bills? Check, or check. are you savvy enough to put money in different places? And let some money work for you. Let some money be saved. You know what I mean? Just how are you going about your day-to-day working? You got to evaluate how you are as an employee before you can make the decision to be a boss. That's a boy. And, and don't let that go over your head. <laughs> Think of, You got to be honest with yourself. Yeah, for sure. Am I a trash employee? When I get my money, do I blow it? For sure. Am I just able to, just enough to pay my bills? Cause, because when you step out, 
that next week check that you exactly. know if I blow this one, well, it's coming exactly. back. If you live in check to check mm-hmm. at work, you might want to um, just take a hard look at that first because you can have a good a good month in business and then a, a terrible month in business right after it. So if you take those practices and habits into that check to check thing, mm-hmm. you take that into business, you you gonna have a long a long road for Very sure. Long road. Yeah, it's gonna get real dark. Okay, question: What inspires you? What being, inspires being me? artistic, being an artist, what what type of things inspires you? What keeps you? Honestly, peace of mind, like just that. I like low level stress environment, so. Even now, I get offered jobs. Um, I guess you, I can partner with people. I get offer contracts and things like that. I really look into what the job is. I don't just jump for for money or a paycheck and things like that. It so gotta, you actually get to you take the time to see if do I want to deal with this? Yeah, that's real. Do this even work for me? Because if I'm not happy with doing it, I I can't guarantee that. And so many, and I can say I've done it before too. You see the dollar amount, mm-hmm. and you say, "I'm gonna just go for it because I need the money." Yeah. So we kind of—that's a natural instinct. Yeah, yeah. So okay, what what makes you do that? Because everybody can't say, "Let me evaluate this. Let me see if I." Yeah, the money sounds good, but let mm-hmm. me see if I even want to deal with this because the average person doesn't do that. Right. Where does that come from? Uh, well, like for me, like I said, I evaluate myself first before I make decisions. Okay. That's just me, period. Okay. If my stress level is going to be affected or my peace is going to be affected, nine times out of ten, my initial reaction is to say no. Whether I say it out loud or not, okay. I'll, I'll, sit, I'll really go back and forth with myself on how important is this for my sanity. Hmm. So that that's really what it is for me. It ain't about money. It ain't about nothing. I like money. Yeah, we all like making yeah, money for sure, for sure. and all of those type of things. But with me, man, like I don't, I can't even think of when I got to. Oh yeah, when I had kids. That's when I got to this point. Sanity is everything because if I'm not in my right state of mind, for me, how can I help my kids stay in the right state of mind? I can't. You get, have to be able to demonstrate that to them. Right. So right. I gotta keep a clear mind more often than the average person because I'm a single parent of two. So after all of the glitz and glam, I go back home and I got real human beings to take care of. So I can't can't afford to get too stressed out because parenting don't stop. So I think that's what keeps me grounded. So I know we talk about business, dollar amounts. No, this is very important. But as a human being, I got to be intact mentally most of the time. So you got a job in front of me and it's something that I'm interested in and you don't seem like too bad of a person to deal with, mm-hmm. then yeah, we're we gonna be we it's we already off to a good start. Okay. If you're a little all over the place with exactly what you want mm-hmm. out of my services. You already know it's gonna might be I, too much. Yeah. First red flag. Right, right, right. Um, and I'll continue to talk to you, do business. We'll we'll talk about what you want from the services and all of those things. But if the bads outweighs the goods, I can't do it. No matter what the the dollar amount is, that's just for me. No, that's that's noble because, like I said, a lot of people they don't do that. Right. They see the bag, whether it's big, small, or whatever. And they just, I got to get this money. I Listen, man, this, we this all got to get this money. But we some don't consider their mental, they stressed out behind the money, chasing the money. I've been stressed out trying to chase. You know what's crazy? And this come from like the, the working field, like working for people. Mm. It's like the more money I made working jobs, the more stressed I was. And the less money I kept. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the years yeah. that I made the most money, those years are a blur to me. I can see that. And when I look back on it, it's like, what was do it, I have? Was it even worth it? You know what I'm saying? Some of my broke day, brokest days ever were in college. Okay. And college is so vivid for me. Like, right. I had a blast. I wasn't, I mean, yeah, we had stressful moments, tests, and papers. Right, 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 but right, right. just the life that I was living there was low stress, and I was broke. Mm. 
You dig what I'm saying? And then I've worked jobs, multiple I've had two jobs in a year. And when you add the salaries together, oh, it was amazing. But I was but so stressed, stressed out that year, man. I don't remember the year. So the peace of mind, it goes above the money. Yes. For me. For me. But again, we all got to get this money. Like that's in our mind. We live in America. You got to get this money. Okay, but that goes into... Okay, because you say, okay, you created something where you can get a different stream of income. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you have more control over how you get the money. Mm-hmm. More of us, because so many are stressed behind the money, not realizing you don't have to just limit yourself to that one way of getting the money. If you only got one way of getting the money, you're in trouble anyway. Especially these days. Like I said, if you got two jobs, that's two streams of income. You get to manage it right. You just got to manage it properly. If one of them too stressful, if a, if you got a full time job and a part time job, or say you got a full time job and it's just too stressful, mm-hmm. you might want to consider getting two part time jobs that ain't as stressful, but the money's still around the same. And, and and be real with yourself with your expenses too, like you see, because you could take a less job, but you mm-hmm. you might could cut back somewhere where you don't need to make this right. crazy amount that got you stressed out. Yes, I ain't saying you gotta be a minimalist, but if you really evaluate your your monthly living expenses, it's a lot of stuff that we don't need, bro. Like I'm still debating on getting rid of Netflix right now as we speak. Like, <laughs> the only reason I Netflix, have if y'all want to do a deal with me sometime in the future, I promise <laughs> you, I apologize, but at this very moment, I ain't sure about seventeen ninety nine. Cause y'all just keeps gonna be regular cable prices, <laughs> but like you say, if you got a bag in the future, I love you, Netflix. Right? Yeah, you yeah. You the greatest. Uh, you the greatest in the world. <laughs> you want to do some business? Right, right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just take a hard look at yourself and what you're spending money on. Um, if you eating out a few, if you eating fast food a few times a day, mm-hmm. that might be something you want to cut back on and maybe cook a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Go grocery shopping and cook. But uh, just just different things, man. Because I think if you really look at the things that you pay for and like really ask yourself what you really need, you'll save some money from there and wouldn't have to work as hard. Making groceries alone helps you save money. If you have the discipline to go home, cook some spaghetti, let it last you a few days. A couple days, you yeah, know, a few days. That $30 a day you were spending all week, mm-hmm. count that up. Right. So you working five days times 30, you do the math. Right. And when you save enough money, then you realize, I mean, even even the type of cars we drive, the the homes that we live in, especially if you're renting, mm-hmm. um, if you already took that leap to buying, um, you know, what I mean, see what you, see, just see what you can cut out of your daily expenses. Then you'll you'll find a more low stress level lifestyle that you can live. OK. OK. Yeah. I saw you had uh, you had interviewed DJ three, two, one um, yeah, with Trey yeah. Boogie. Yep. He's the per- one of the perfect people to talk to about that because he he lived like a minimalist style lifestyle and he seems very happy to me. Yeah, when he broke down some of the numbers and stuff and what he said, what he said, mm-hmm. but he's able to do the things he's doing mm-hmm. off of that. I was like, yeah, I, I do need yeah, to talk y'all go more back to check him. out yeah. that episode. That's, That's one guy good. that I, I would trust to say, holla at him about cutting expenses. He, he do that. He do that well. But if, and if you notice, he's still moving around. He still mm-hmm. need to take his trips and mm-hmm. do different things. He, then he he's about to go to Vegas or whatever. So mm-hmm. he clearly knows what he's talking about. He fired his boss. He fired his boss. <laughs> he, fired. he fired his boss. That was a really good episode. Mm-hmm. You know about creating. He created opportunities where there literally was nothing. Right. You know. But and it started with him. It started with uh, knowing himself. He got to know himself once he got to know himself he was able to move a little different now, i'll leave it at that i'm sure if you want to know more about that go back to that episode or reach out to him but that's something that I, I i follow as well that seems to be a good theme about being honest and knowing yourself mm-hmm. i gotta say you you are one of the most relaxed drama free i try to be just peaceful I, well i ain't saying peaceful in a of course not in a weak way but yeah. you just chill you just yeah. you, self-awareness you ain't trying to Self awareness. You ain't trying to start nothing, but you ain't running from them. But you ain't trying to start nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I appreciate that. I admire that. And and sometimes I think like, 
not in a funny way, but I'm like, man, what would DB5 do? Because <laughs> I'd be ready to snap. Now that he be chilling, how he be chilling? Like Bro, that? life is really simple, man. Break you it know, down, man. No, we make it hard. It's, yo, it's certain principles. All right, so we all... Okay, but for the people thing. listening, because somebody might be like, well, what you talking about, man? What you... No, nah, but like... Just... So, bring just so just living life, period. Like, if you do certain basic things, life can be simple. We go out our way to make it hard for ourselves. Our wants start to take over, start to outweigh our needs. Like, little stuff like that. If you really focus on your needs more than your wants, life will be easier. You don't always got to entertain certain things or try to get validation from others if you got it within yourself. How do you even know I need to hear that? Uh, hey, look, how you, you asked me how I, how I yeah. appear to be so peaceful and chill and serene. I needed this. That was for me, y'all. That wasn't just for y'all. That one was for me. Yeah, man, self-validation. Yeah. That's more important. Like, focus on your needs more than your wants, man. We don't really know what we want. We be on social media saying stuff. And we didn't even think we ever want it. But now we want it because it looked good. But if you can check yourself at the door and say, do you need that? Do I need that? You ain't stressed out no more. Like, a lot of people my age right now uh, buying homes. I'm currently not a homeowner. Okay. I could let that stress me out. Because you could look at that and be like, I'm, I'm falling I'm behind. behind. Come on, talk. You're talking, ask talking myself, good. You're talking good. Do I need all of the responsibilities that's going to come with home ownership at this moment? Even the stress of going through trying to even get the home. Right. Do I need that right now? Okay. And if I don't need it right now, it don't stress me out. Good gracious. I would like a huge house right now, though. So if anybody want to give me one and donate one, then cool. Now, that, <laughs> what he's saying might sound simplistic, but it makes a world of sense. Because I think a lot of us, because they are, they're constantly bombarding us with what we think we want to see. Mm -hmm. Because they're taking our information and you know, mm -hmm. flipping it and bouncing it and making us think we want to see this stuff that's popping up on the... Um, our phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your phone knows you better than you do. Oh, yeah. But it circle back around to what your question was. So, okay. knowing what you want your business to be and what you want out of it. I want a peace of mind. That's what I want out of my current business, which is photography. Um, I want a peace of mind. I like being a part of cool environments, cool projects, um, artistic projects, things like that. And to interject, that's one reason I went ahead and started my podcast, because... Mm -hmm. It's really no stress involved with this. I enjoy it. Like, for one, certain people I'm going to get is going to pe be people I'm associated with anyway. Mm -hmm. Conversations we've had anyway. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to lift a box. I ain't got to go, you know, deal with no butthole or right. nothing like that. We can just sit here and kick it. Right. Edit it after we're done. And I'm enjoying doing that. Right. So, and, I'm assuming you, you haven't know, made a million dollars off this year. I guess ain't no money attached to it yet. And you enjoy doing it. I right? love doing it. So how do you think you would feel doing this and, and making a million dollars? Man, I'm be like Kanye, you ain't baby you can't tell me nothing. Right. Ooh. And I think at that point, for real, the money ain't even gonna be a factor. Like when you're doing something that you enjoy doing without the money, it's weird how more money will come. And I believe that that's why I'm I'm dedicated to sticking with it, because I like yeah. I really just enjoying Getting the information and having these conversations. Focusing with on the craft. You're focusing on the art. You're focusing on putting the information out there. You're giving a service. You're giving to people. You know what I mean? Somebody might hear this and it may change their life today. You know what I'm saying? They might be know. stuck and don't know what they should do next. Or they might be at their job, under appreciating their job, thinking, I'm going to go start a business. This might make them think about it. Wait, do I have a plan before I start this Do business? I need to do that? Right do now. I need that business right, right now? Do I need it right now? Am I managing my job properly before I go start a business? Am I living check to check? And if so, why? Get to the root of that. Right. Is it the job fault or my fault? Is it my expenses or what they paying me? So, I mean, I don't know. But the fact that you're putting this information out there for people to hear and you enjoy doing it, I mean, just stick to it. Because sometimes I want to go back and listen to it. Because sometimes, like the, like you said with 321, yeah. there's something I can go back and check out myself. I, like, I might have missed something. What did he say right here? Yeah. And I'm hoping other people found it as valuable, too. Right. You know and they saying? will. Somebody will. Yeah. Somebody yeah. will. If you reach one, man, you did your job. And 
That's why I ain't tripping. Even if it's yourself. Yeah. That's that's why I ain't tripping, man. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm enjoying just having you here, kicking it with you. You know what no I'm doubt, saying? No doubt. No doubt. Good no information. Doubt. Okay, so anything you're working on presently or going forward? You, what, any visions you got or anything you're putting out there? Uh, at the moment, I'm just trying to see what the world gonna do. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we currently still in a pandemic. Yeah. I see some people out here living life. Y'all just be more safe. More and more states opening up. Like they say, no you know mask, no and, and I'm ready to get back to normal as well, but just just be safe. Be careful. Me personally, uh, I'm taking my time. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm staying a little quiet. You know what I mean? I ain't doing too much talking. I'm doing more as observing. Mm. So mm, that's, 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 that's where I'm at right there. now. Okay. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah, I'm still working. I still do photo shoots at the um, studio. Still doing outdoor things, but I, I gotta see what what the world gonna do before I make too many big plans. Cause we all had big plans for uh twenty twenty vision, baby. Like that, you. look, twenty twenty was everybody year. And, and by this yeah, time, the world was like nah. By this time last year, whew, yeah, everybody nah, was stuck in the house. Dead, like, yeah, what is we gonna do? Especially people that invested money and stuff, ready to do this, do that. Exactly. Done. Exactly. So that makes sense. Bro, yeah, I'm supposed to hit more foreign countries last year off photography. Man, I got a vacation now I supposed to took that I could have took. You said off photography. Not vacations. It's international. I just missed it. I, I called Jobs. It. Uh, contracts. That's dope. So, but I missed that last year. So, I am planning for more this year and the years coming. But, like, I got to see what the world going to do. Right. So that when you ask what's next, okay. I want to see more foreign countries because I enjoy Cuba yeah. and Colombia. You took some dope. dope pictures out there, the ones I saw you post. Appreciate it, yeah. appreciate it. But it was just dope experiences, period. Period. It was dope. Okay. And I, oh, and it's crazy. Like, the, the things that I liked about those um, jobs, mm -hmm. I mean, I could call them trips. It was trips to, I was working. It was a business trip. Bro, the, the limited uh, internet access. It's crazy. Peaceful. Some people probably wig out. They couldn't take that. Well, you see how big I am on peace, though. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That was peace. So knowing that they couldn't reach you anyway. Not that they can't reach me because I got children. And I did have ways for them to contact me if they needed me okay. and all that. Okay. But to not be able to walk or be in the street or in an Uber on social media. And the, and the person the, with you has to have a conversation because they can't just be sitting there all day. That part of school, too, the yeah. dialogue with people, mm -hmm. but to watch your surroundings, yo, like, mm -hmm. riding around these places I've never been before, I was able to look and see everything, all the beauty in those countries. Instead of being here. Yeah, because we all Taking a picture, trying to post it. Taking a picture, trying to post it. Bro, it's crazy. We it's miss out crazy. on a lot of real memories. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, and with me being the photographer, I got that advantage anyway, because, yes, I'm taking the pictures of everyone else, but I'm capturing the scenery. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm really paying attention to detail of the environment because I need to know where to shoot for the picture to look the best. So I'm really taking in everything. So that's a part of the art. The that's art. a part of the art and that's a part of my why. Why do I want a photography business? Because I enjoy what comes with photography. It ain't just taking pictures. I get to really tap into the environment. That. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, you get, what you got, peaceful. you got to see that... that Mm -hmm. Environment, country you've never been to. Mm -hmm. Oh, not just that. If I'm shooting a wedding, I like to capture love. I like to be in the essence of the moments. You know what I'm saying? I like seeing those people in the front of all of them people for their union. You know what I mean? Okay. Bring their union together. That does something for me. And you, you know get to mean? capture it. And I get to capture it. I get to be in those environments to capture it. I feel the love when I'm in there. It's positivity. I'm all about peace. Positivity, all of that. Okay, so, so in, I feel it when I'm in there. So in seeking to have peace, you attract places that allow you to be. I peaceful, put myself in environments peace. that has peace and positivity. I hope y'all are listening. It, it, like I say, it might sound simplistic, but because I know so many that deal with a lot of trauma or feeling like they have to address this or they gotta do this or they gotta, all while trying to. Either work a job or maintain a business or be a parent. Mm -hmm. And I try to help eliminate some of that by telling them, like, you know you don't have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. You know you don't have to mm -hmm. talk to this person or deal with these people. This. But hopefully y'all can play this back and hear how it's been simplified. And just ask yourself, do I need this right now? Do you? 
Whether even, it's in business, even with relationship, those, whatever. With those, all the, the people that's full of drama and things like mm-hmm. that that you feel like you have an obligation to, I mean, you can fulfill your obligation and stay in it or fulfill your obligation and walk away from it. Those who really love you will understand when you're working on oh, yeah. protecting your, your peace. You don't got to be a butthole about it. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay to love people from a distance sometimes. That's yeah. a that's a part of it too because even when you start when people start businesses, mm-hmm. I tell anybody when you start a business, that's mm-hmm. when you gonna find out who your friends are. Yeah, try not to take it personally. Just try not well, to take anything. Mean, personal. It just is what it is. It is because people know? are gonna lean on their personal relationships mm-hmm. to try to play you and try to abuse their their place in your life to get your service. Just realize it's a part of the process. Mm-hmm. Like you said, don't take it personal. Just realize. Because they're not going to be used to the new you. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's not just the new you. It's like I'm actually trying to walk in my purpose now. Right. If you love me, if you're my friend, I would think you would understand that. But yeah. since you don't, then now I know who you are. And it's different people that play different roles in your life. If somebody has been looking out for you your whole life, I mean, it might be I right to uh, open up opportunities to where yeah. they can benefit yeah. from some things. Yeah. And does that mean do your service for free? No, not all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you feel like, I mean, they need you need to charge them, you can charge them. Or you can offer them some type of investment opportunity. And that goes back to what you said. If they love you, either way you offer it to them, they'll understand. They understand. Because they'll know where you're coming from is a place of love as well. They should understand. And business like, this is my business. This is how I'm trying to feed my family. Mm-hmm. So I can't always do it for free. Right. If they love you, they'll understand. They should respect that. Yeah. I think so. You know, I and I'm just speaking for me. If you're my friend, mm-hmm. I'm not looking for a discount. I'm going to pay what you charge because that's how I support you. Right. It don't do me no good to, yo, let me get a shirt for free. Let me and just right. rock it. Let me rock it for you. Now, if you offer me a discount, I'm going to take it. That's different. <laughs> but let me offer it. If you offer me a discount, I'm going let to Let me take offer it. it. Don't ask me what's on sale. It's always on sale. Yeah, right. I feel exactly what you're saying. Though, you know what I'm saying? I got some people that hit me up um, for photography. They hit me up uh, like a, like every month or every other month to see what sales I'm running, what it's specials always, I'm running. It's always on sale, y'all. It is. You know what I'm saying? But I got people that hit me up and they, they only want to work with me when I'm running a special. And that's fine. And I get it. They just got to wait for the special. Because we shop at certain stores and things. Right. And that's why as a business, we run them special. So, right. Because we want you to come in. Right. Well, pay the price sometime too. Right. You know, it'd be I, nice. I you. you know what I'm saying. I feel you. I still try. I mean, now don't get me wrong. Some things do upset me. It ain't like I'm just this super peaceful person. So I do have people that'll hit me up early in the morning about a shoot. And I find myself answering questions the entire day. Mm-hmm. Even I, I've already sent you my pricing sheet. I've already answered what questions that may not be on the pricing sheet. Like, what else do I need to do? Right, but then when I find that you're trying to eliminate things off of out of what I offer so that you can get a lower price, that bothers me a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And most of the time, those type of people I don't want to work with because I've already identified some yeah. red flag. And it's going to be a struggle the whole way through. Right, because I've had people that hit me up and I, I let them know what I charge and what I offer. And they're, with, they're like, oh, that's perfect. Because it's what they were looking for. You know what I'm saying? They already had it in mind. They're going to respect. They already respect the service. And and you can agree or disagree with what I'm about to say. Okay. But prior to your pay, you paying your money, customers, you're not always right. Prior to you paying your money. Now, once you pay for what, you, what we've agreed to, then you have a little more say-so. But prior to that, you're not always right. I can decide whether I want to do business with you or not. Right. I don't have to. Right. And if you get an attitude about it, that's a you problem. Right. Because prior to you paying your money, you're not always right. Because just like we can decide, okay, I'm either this this restaurant is my favorite or I Mm -hmm. prefer this one over that one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of the restaurants is like, I prefer this type of customer. Mm -hmm. I prefer prefer a particular type of customer. It's a, it's a, a range to that. Right. But if you're a certain way, I'd rather you go buy it from someone else. To be honest, prior to you 
paying your money. You're right. not always right. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to agree with that, but I just wanted to put that out there. Hey, look. I do my self-evaluations, and I leave it at that. <laughs> I can't do... I, can, I respect that. <laughs> I, I, I can't do nothing but respect that. But, yeah. Um, like I said, when somebody know what they, how they want to utilize your services and they respect it, that's, that's a cool little transaction. Someone who's looking to abuse it, um, yeah, that's not always the most comfortable transaction. You know what I'm saying? If you know that you put all this time into making your oils and you already got a price set for it and they they constantly trying to cut those prices. It's like a they, fair price. You know, you even know. if it wasn't, it's your price. Well, the they price, get you up because they want the product. The price is the price. Bro, they hit you up because they want it. They like the product. Yeah. So if they like it that much, pay for the product. It's just that simple, though. Yeah. Like, it's just that simple. They're not hitting up Dior saying, like, yo, I love your cologne. Like, But can I get a 50% discount? They ain't doing that. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I don't know. But, yeah, like you said, I businesses agree. know the type of customers they want to work with. And I love everybody, like, as a person. Oh, I love everybody. Yeah. As a person. And initially... My energy is going to be positive. That's because I absolutely self awareness. Absolutely, and you're saying a lot without saying and saying more when saying that self awareness. So I won't go because we know ourselves better than the people that are potentially trying to do business with us. Okay, for instance, I know how I might react if I allow myself to be put in certain situations. Mm-hmm. So, like you say, self-awareness. Why put myself in that situation where it ain't even so much about you. It's about how what I might say to you because right. of what's going on. Right. So, instead of me putting myself in that situation to be mm-hmm. unprofessional mm-hmm. or disrespectful, mm-hmm. how about I decline respectfully? There you go. See, okay. You got it. You got I, it. Okay. Okay. You got it. That's, that's it. It's I, just that simple. It's that simple. But a lot of people don't do that. And that's fine. Well, I guess it is, but they got to deal with it. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. I'm learning, man. That I mean, <laughs> even at 41, like you said, I'm a couple, just a few years older, but I'm learning. Hey, listen, when I'm, well, I'm always in some type of grind mode or anything like that, but mm-hmm. I'm a full-time parent. Yes, you are. I respect that. That's where I, the the root, the base, it always go back there for okay. me. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? It always goes back to that with me. And I got some very savvy kids, bro. Like, Look who their pops is. They are, bro, they are very clever. So I got to be on my toes all the you time. You can't be slipping. I can never be slipping with them. So I can't get too wrapped up in all this other stuff, whether it's my business or going to work. Or Anything. Anything. I can't. Your, because they your my head space always has to be available. It gotta be available yeah. to an extent for them. You know what I'm saying? So I don't let too much stuff get to me because when I go home, I gotta play chess <laughs> with them. And I know that I'm grooming the perfect chess players. So I'm I'm more focused on that, man. So I don't know. So like I told you, when you do something you love and you ain't focused on the money, more money comes. So I ain't really tripping over everything. I'm I'm planting I'm 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 watering those seeds that I planted into them. So all this other stuff I do on the outside, it look cool. More people want to come take pictures with me. They like my work, all of that, and it's dope. I will invite you into my peaceful environment. We're gonna take some nice pictures. You can be happy with the product. You know what I mean? If you ain't, we'll figure out what we gotta do to make it right and all of that. And I'm gonna go home with a peaceful, clear mind. Because I got these two little bright little jokers down here that I got to go home and be clever with. Because they always trying to see if I'm still shocked today. I, I hope y'all listening in once you click on. This is really good stuff. Because me, okay, I'm not in the house with my kids. But I have been at some point. Right. But the ones that are, you deal with a lot of the same stuff he's saying. You got to go out into the world and work and do mm-hmm. what you have to do. Mm-hmm. But then you have to come back home. Mm-hmm. You got to be careful what you bring back home. I was going to say, your kids don't know such and such pissed you off at work. You got to be careful. You can't you take it out home. on them. Yeah, exactly. They just want to, They just want some eat eat. Mm-hmm. You can't go in your room. And I'm not condemning anybody because I'm not in your house. But what I'm saying is just be mindful, man. Right. They're listening. They're watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're definitely doing both of them. They're those. doing both. Eat at the, 
we were kids. I know how much I listened to stuff older people would say, even when they had no idea. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. They're always listening and watching. Always. And always. modeling those behaviors when they go out into the world, they are a direct reflection of what they see you do and say. I, I remember being small and I won't say which family member, but they would throw a little cigarette out. Me and one of my family members, we, we, we little five, six year old, we picked it up, <laughs> get the little cigarette, but because we thought it was cool. Yeah. We didn't know. That's boring. something I've never done, man. I never smoked like uh, cigarettes and things like that. That's no, great, man. That. I'm asthmatic. That's great. Though no, you may find a picture of me trying to uh, cigar. I was in Cuba, so I had to. Yeah, I didn't get but when I realized it wouldn't kill me, because my whole life I assumed that inhaling any smoke, I would die on the spot. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought that part of my life. When was you look, at when I was growing up? <laughs> look, man, don't ask me why I felt that way. But yeah, man, I never, I never did that. I never smoked um, cigarettes. I never smoked marijuana and things like that. You never smoked no trees? Mm-mm. You drunk some liquor, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I started when I was 21. You purposely waited? Or you just happened no, to? No, I had no interest. Um, growing up, I ain't had no interest. I, yeah, I ain't had no interest. I just ain't had no interest. But once I got to college, you know, parties and things like that, um, I wasn't more, I wasn't as afraid of alcohol as I was, like, marijuana and things like that. Plus, I try to minimize the, um, I try to minimize the ways to go to jail. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. I just had to let that flow. Because I mean, I know I know this will sound crazy today because weed is legal like everywhere, including Mars. But like back then, like you don't want to get caught with certain oh, things because wow. it could ruin the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? I always kind of thought about that, even though like growing up, I didn't think I would live a lot of years coming from them. Type and that's of what that's what intrigues from. me because you come from the environment. Well, that's regular. But see, I paid attention to a lot of the negatives and and model what I do from that. Like my dad and my oldest brother spent a lot of my childhood in prison. Okay. My mom used to go visit my brother all the time. Um, I used to go visit my dad. I used to go visit my uncle. Okay. I've been I've visited so many prisons to where I knew I didn't want to live there. I can't live here. You Make know what I mean? It was okay. it was uncomfortable getting searched. As a, a nine year old getting searched to go see somebody, you know what I mean? All them iron doors clinging and all. I don't know. I didn't like that back then, so I think she I made up enough. my mind then that I won't go end up there if I didn't have to. Now, was I into things that could have landed me there? Yes. Was I very smart about those things in my mind? Yes. Yeah, you didn't get locked up for them. Was I blessed and someone was watching over me during that time? Yes. Until I was old enough to realize myself, like, all right, now, you wild out long enough, you got away with enough, yo, chill out. Chill out. I just, I, I respect that and I'm intrigued by that because it seemed that you, 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 you possess those switches that people need to click at certain times in their life to get to the next step. Okay. Everybody doesn't have that. Right. Me and my dad talk about that a lot, too. He, yeah. he always tell me how, how uh, he really admired that. I mean, even since I've known you, I've seen you evolve into just this peaceful person that does what he loves. Right. Ain't bother nobody. If they see, if you see, you see. If you don't, you doing what you doing. But you're not just out in the mix trying to. You go home playing chess. Yeah, literally, because my daughter she likes chess like in real life. So that's dope. We literally be playing chess. That's dope, man. <laughs> So yeah, I mean that's I I found I, I found what makes me happy in life, man, and and I know it's cliche, but like you know, my kids, so I base everything from that. So when you see me out and about, I'm here right now talking to you because of them, and these answers that I'm giving you still root back to how I'm gonna feel when I leave here to go deal with them. You okay. know what I'm saying? So that's, I don't know. That's my comfort zone. That's the one. I appreciate this part even more than the business part because I, I believe without this part, you don't right. get to the other parts. Yeah, we can get to the business though, man. I know we've been no, talking. No, 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 no. no. Listen, man. Good uh, conversation is good conversation. No doubt, no we've doubt, been talking no about doubt. business and stuff. We've, we've covered a lot of that, but... No doubt. Whoever's watching, they may want to start a business. 
Mm-hmm. But back to that self evaluation. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I want to start a business and if I'm looking forward, at some point I'm gonna probably have to lead people. Right. How am I leading at home? Right. You know. Right. You and even if you are a um, sole proprietor and you're gonna be doing all of the work, how do you manage your time, money, stress levels? Um, how do you deal how do you deal with people? You know what I mean, as far as you're gonna if you're offering a service, are you able to do scheduling are you able to uh, speak professionally when you're trying to negotiate deals are you able to separate your money so you can pay your taxes are you able to you know what I mean are you able to do these things it's a different ball game totally different ball game totally different ball game and with your job are you living check to check and if so are you gonna live check to check from your business cause that's dangerous cause that business not gonna always be up when you start in a new business in a small town like we live in, yeah, um, it can get popular real fast, it real does. fast. Your head can get big real fast. Then it die down real fast, even faster. <laughs> twenty twenty, <laughs> so, it went up. Yeah, and that rocket ship came right down. Boom! All right, so how how you gonna deal with that? You know what I mean? That go back to planning. A lot of people gonna quit. I go back to planning. When somebody else start doing what you do and you see their little popularity run, because we all get the popularity run. You know what I mean? It's all about longevity, though. You know what I mean? It's a marathon. Yeah, right. So I got my first camera in 2012. Um, I established my business in 2015. Okay. Uh, March marks four years that I've been in my studio. Wow, it's been that long? Mm-hmm. Wow, it's been good. that long. That's dope. So, my thing is, what are you focused on when you establish these things? What is your plan? What are you going to do during the hot times? What are you going to do during the low times? What are you going to do during the pandemic? God bless me to still have my studio right now. Like, we just closed down for a whole year. And I'm still in the same location. That was, you know what I mean? That's God. Because, and even though this word has been overused over the last year, you're going to have to learn. Nowadays, you have to learn how to pivot. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to learn how to either have things in place or put things in place. Mm-hmm. Like, I was thankful, and that's why I tell people, get you a website. If you're selling something. Right. Because prior to the pandemic, sales, couple sales here and there. Mm-hmm. And it's not crazy now, but... The week everything shut down, my website sales went up. Still, and they stayed up for for for, for a few months. And it hit a dry spell, <clears throat> and some things changed in my right. life, and I ended up doing having to do some other things. Right. But without their website, my business would have died. Right. Because I'm on the road, I don't have time to go to each person. I was able to get orders from out of state, different things of that nature. Are you prepared to pivot if? The way you think your business is going to start, the whole, like like you said last year, the whole world changed. Right. Your whole business model might have to change. Are right. you prepared for that? And is that a part of your plan? I mean, we said at the very beginning, what's one of the things that people, make sure you got a plan, man. What is the business you want and what do you want out of it? What do you want out of it? Some people think, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to be straight for the rest of my life. Some people think, I'm going to start a business, I'm going to build equity within five years and sell it. I'm going to sell it, right. right. So it's different. But what, is, what right. is your plan, though? What do you plan to get out of this? And that's a very serious question because you could be into it for a few years and still don't know. Right. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know. All right, I'm not, I ain't going to hold you much longer. I got okay. maybe two more questions. No doubt. Okay. In the next... Five years. Mm-hmm. What do you see your yourself, your brand, your family, or whatever you have going on? That way, and I borrowed this idea from um, one of my favorite podcasts that I watch. So I'm not trying to take credit for nobody's <laughs> stuff. Come from David Shans. Okay. Um, Sleepers for Suckers, his podcast. I, I watch that a lot. Right, I gotta check that out. But he often asks his guests at the end, in the next five years, where do you see yourself? That way, in five years, we can look back and say. Okay, I, I put this out into the universe and it manifested. Gotcha. Let's see, in five years, how great will my kids be? I told you, I always root back to them. Okay. Um. So business-wise, I would like to share some of the knowledge and experience that 
I've been able that I've been blessed to, you know, what I mean to witness. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe educating others on following similar paths to what I've followed, well, that I've gone down on okay. a business level. All right. Uh, that's that's one thing for sure. Um, mm, that's a good question, man. Like, I don't want to just give cliche answers, but on the business side, maybe teaching more. Okay. Uh, family. So maybe putting together like a course or something and. That could be something, something in the in the lanes of educational. Though I'm not going to just say do like a um, master class or mm -hmm. anything like that. But if I'm blessed to have a small academy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, school, okay. So you know what I'm saying? I want something more hands on. Okay. But I like the the way of the internet and all of that stuff. So you don't want to just make a digital product and put it out there. You not necessarily be involved. I'm sure that something like that will go along with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do want to be more hands on and like, t um, specifically kids. Like I don't know, I got a passion for children. I always feel like if we can help the children, then we help the future. So yeah, absolutely. If I can teach them, if I can be the person I needed as a child, then boom, there you go. In five years, I would like to be more of the person that I needed growing up. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. Okay. That's 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 pretty much to sum that whole thing up. Even for mm. my kids, you said in five years, let's see, India will be seventeen. She a female, so it'll be a little different. I right, so chief, he'll be fifteen, fourteen. Yeah, he'll be fourteen. Okay. So who did I need as a fourteen year old male? Mm. Good. Yeah, that's 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 who I want to be in five years. Okay. And I think uh, once I figure out exactly what that entails, then I have more of an understanding of where I will be business-wise, personal, love, life. But they give living. you the plan. That's the goal. The end goal is to be that person. If I'm that person that I need it, then I think I'm going to be in good shape for everything else that falls falls in the, into that. Okay, that's, that's dope. Yeah, that's, what okay. I, that's how I feel. Hey, that's all that matters. That's how you feel. That's that's mm -hmm. that's an excellent answer, man. Better than what I was thinking. I'm thinking more numbers wise, but if you get that part right, you so see everything. Numbers as in money. Yeah, but what but what I'm saying is, I don't move for money. That's what I was saying. You get that base right. Yeah, like you said, everything else falls in place. Yeah, like okay. so, like when you asked me that question, it was more so of how I'm gonna help others and help myself. Like I, it ain't. Numbers wise, I don't know. I don't know if I continue to do what I love. I'm sure the numbers is gonna be great, but man, yeah, okay. yeah, we all gonna get this money either way. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, but don't don't let the money make you. No. Yeah, don't let the money make you. Let the money make itself. Like you say, find what you love, and and things will branch off from that. Mm hmm. You know, just keep creative. You're creative. Just create. Yeah, and for sure, I do know in five years I'll still be uh, expressing myself creatively in some form or, or another. Okay. Yeah, I do want to travel more. Of the, I do want to see more of the world, though. That's the and that's gonna happen. Okay, what's, I enjoy just that. a quick. What's your number one place you want to go? Uh. Or do you have one? I had one. I had this odd um, obsession with the UK at one point. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Honestly, I don't. And I had uh, a weird obsession with Tokyo at one point. I heard it was dope, though. So those two places. But the more um, South American countries I've been blessed to to go to, I like them a lot more. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Now, I haven't been to anywhere that's similar to the other two that I named, Tokyo or UK. Okay. But, um, yeah, th those two always had my attention for some reason. But now that I'm working in spaces where I could go out of the country and do some work like uh was Iceland I believe with the real pretty sky at night it turned like purple and talk about like the um the northern lights I yeah. think that's what it is like now I want to see stuff like that for sure absolutely. you know what I'm saying yeah, like this world is, is too the access to it it's easy to get out there now. right so there's no excuse like you said once the things start moving back around right it's not that expensive as people might think to travel man yeah, it costs a few dollars, but not like people might think. 
Or you can put yourself in position to where you're getting paid to do it. Where the service that you offer, it makes sense for people to place you in, to put you in those places. Okay. Okay. That's different from what I said then because it's more to it. Okay. Yeah. Ain't necessarily uh, just to go because I, I don't go for a check. You know okay. what I'm saying? But if it makes sense for my services to be a part of what you got going on and I'm able to experience those places, then yeah, let's, let's make it work. That's a different mindset, man. That's why I keep keying in on why you do certain things and how because it's the mindset that determines where you get to because mm-hmm. it all starts up here. Right. It's no need to go through life and everything outside be crazy and everything in here be crazy. Inside of here be Boy, crazy you in too. trouble if that happens. But I think, Yo, I think so many of us operate that way. All right. And maybe it's because I, uh, my education and my professional uh, work environment was mental health, mm-hmm. human services. Right. So I, over the past decade, I've been dealing with the way people think. Okay. And why. Right. You know what I'm saying? With the type of jobs I've had, things like that. So, <clears throat> what I've learned from that is, because I worked in environments where people really don't have a, a hold on what's going on in their mind. Mm-hmm. That made me think about my own mental health and not allow myself to be driven to a point well, to where don't I don't have a grip on my own mental health. Because that can happen too. Mm-hmm. If you're in a relationship with a stressful, uh, significant other, uh-huh. and you stay in there too long, you will start exhibiting some of those behaviors yourself. Because I mean, even if you're it's just a defense, to me again. <laughs> even if it's just a defense mechanism, um, because you're constantly being abused, whether mentally or anything like that, you're gonna automatically start finding ways to protect yourself. But it may throw you off a little bit mentally. And then you find yourself in a dark place more and more often. So imagine compiling that with having a stressful job, stressful relationship, things like that. And you have to manage little people, like if you are a parent. So just bringing it back all together, working in those type of high stress environments, I had to keep it cool anyway, because I can't let that affect how I deal with my kids when I get home. I've worked with you at risk youth for mm-hmm. a long time. Right. That comes with a lot of attitude. Right. That comes with a lot of verbal assaults. Sometimes physical, never on me because I don't put myself in those type of situations. I've been blessed to be able to talk people off the ledge. Literally. That's good. So, but in order to do that, I got to know myself because they might cuss me out while I'm up there. But if I get upset, you know, I might tell you, you know tight. what? Go ahead and jump. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I've but, seen instances where the person that's supposed to be trying to help the situation will get frustrated. And start Next thing that. you know, we get to try to restrain the grown and person. everything goes. Yeah, so, you know. so you got to keep yourself grounded, man. And I think uh, me working and quote unquote helping those kids, mm-hmm. man, that helped me. Like it helped me. They might have helped me a little more than I helped them. Actually, I told one of the young men that was at one of the facilities that mm-hmm. I was like, bro, you you thanking me? I was like, I learned from y'all. Right. Because I had to analyze myself every day to make sure. Right. Or when I would see some of y'all behaviors, I'm like, hey, I've done that before. And a lot worse. Yeah. I'm like, like yo, I, yo. I, grew, I grew up in a wild time with some equally wild people. And I know, like, I, I couldn't. I, I can't match. So, like, as an adult, especially with these kids that get out of hand, mm-hmm. I'm kind of glad I worked with at-risk youth mm-hmm. instead of um, working with maybe in corrections like and things like that with right. people my age or older. At-risk youth, I'm I'm not going to be as quick to go there with them anyway. That's a child. I'm an adult. Right, right. So, I've been blessed to put in those type of situations to exhibit those type of behaviors, but also have the mindset to know my place in it. So, that kind of helped me mold myself to stay at a level where it don't got to escalate. Okay. I ain't saying I would have reacted the same way if I was a correction officer and grown men did that right. same thing and testing my manhood. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how I would have reacted if that was the type of uh, experiences I would have had. Mm. 
But with me working with kids, I'm able to have a little more compassion and understanding, and I can kick some, a little more knowledge because I'm like, man, part of their development. I've been where you've been. You're part of their development. You know what I'm saying? Whether you know my background or not, but, trust me, I fully understand. A lot of the kids that I work with, without me even saying, they're like, yo, Mr. Rob's like, you cool, like you you calm and collected. But I can tell you, you understand us a little bit more than... <laughs> but that's good, though. Yeah. That's good. You don't even have to try to prove it to yeah, you. Yeah, I ain't got to prove I ain't got to tell you where I'm from. I ain't got to tell you, oh, I grew up in a project. Uh, my dad was like, well, I ain't got to do none of that. That ain't what it's about anyway. I'm here to help you. But if I can keep myself here, nine times out of ten, the person that's up here, they'll start to come down. Because I, I think at some point, just acting crazy by yourself just feel crazy. Especially when somebody's watching you. Yeah. It's like, how long am I going to do this? Yeah. Let me chill. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, one, one other question. All right. What are you afraid of? Hmm. What am I afraid of? That's a good question, man. That's a really good question. I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna have to edit that part for that long pause, but it's cool if I got to. I'm with. In a physical sense, I haven't been afraid in a long time, so that's kind of hard to say. Okay. Um. All right, right. So I don't know, like, what your like, what everybody's relationship with God and things like that is, but okay. I got a solid one. Okay. Talk you about feel what I'm saying? I got a solid relationship. I'm not the most religious person in the world. I can't quote you the whole Bible and all those things. But with the, I feel so protected with the way God has been blessing me okay. that I don't, I haven't had to fear in a long time. So I don't know. Yes, I do have emotions. I go through emotions when I saw George Floyd. Mm-hmm. They killed them on TV. When I see all these rappers get killed, I go through emotions, but I don't fear that stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so physically, I haven't felt fear in a long time. So that's hard. that's a hard question. I don't fear failure. I don't fear any of those things. Um, I've been at nothing before. Right. And I know how to get back. So I don't know. That's a hard question, bro. And I'm sorry I ain't got no profound no, no. answer no, no, for everybody, no, no, but no, no, no. I don't know, man. I don't. Yeah, mm, about that. I haven't physically felt fear in a long time. I mean, that's your answer. It's all good. Like I, I'm yeah. not looking for a cliche answer. Yeah. It's a it's a question I actually want to catch people a little bit off guard. Yeah. Because yeah, I live in this little bubble, man, with my kids. <laughs> like that's that's just all I do. We got a safe zone. So you want to always be able to do for them. Yeah. Do you fear not being able to do for them? No, because mm-hmm. okay. that's they're gonna be straight. Okay. They're gonna be straight. Whether I can do it or not, they're gonna be straight. And if I can't do it, trust me, it'll be a valid reason why I can't. So, and it will be out of my hands. Okay. So I fear that. Man, I, I like this. I, I gotta. I'm gonna have to look back at this one myself. <laughs> not because, as real talk, though. Just being honest. Your approach, and I think that's what I'm intrigued about. Your approach to, okay, you're faced with a situation, and mm-hmm. it seems like you immediately analyze. Mm-hmm. I try to. How do I? Does this work for me? Mm-hmm. How would I react if I get involved with this? Mm-hmm. And then you make a decision instead of it happening, and you react. Because right. so many of us do that. Or Being people, reactive is dangerous. Who you telling me? Yeah, hey. I prefer proactive. Being reactive is dangerous. Yes, it is. Well, look, man, because we could, I want to have you back sometime, too. Okay. Yeah, because That's this is cool. the first time, but it's, it's other areas, even with business or whatever, uh-huh. we could just focus on one particular area. Yeah, no but doubt. I, I did I answer all the questions that you had laid out, though? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Listen, man, you did great. All right, but Excellent. Don't I know mean, you said we was talking business, but we talked about my kids most of the time. But you know what? <laughs> I believe the people, when they watch this, they're mm-hmm. going to get more out of this. Because you got all kind of podcasts about business. And yeah, right. I do want to have people on and talk about that. Right. But it's that base you're talking about, that foundation. Mm-hmm. Man, that you ain't going to have none of this other stuff working if you can't get that right. Right. First. You got to be grounded, man. Simple you got to be that. grounded. So that was worth more than any You got to be grounded. When you go back to home base, you got to be grounded. Yeah. 
and be ready to go back and try to conquer the world again the next day. Yes, sir. But you got to be in a good mindset to go back and get uh, recharged so that you can go back out there. All right, well, how can the people reach you if they need your services or whatever? Oh, man, Eagle Vision Photography on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and EagleVisionCreations.com is the website. Okay, I'll make sure I put everything in the description so there won't be any excuse when y'all say, who do photography? <laughs> Click the link. No doubt. It's no going to be right there in the description, so we, we're going to eliminate that. We want to support not just black-owned businesses. We right. want to support good businesses. Right. We want to support our people, but we want to support good businesses, period. And I'm going to yeah. just leave it like that. I want to thank you again for coming through, man. No doubt, man. We got to do it having... again. Yeah. Yes, sir. For sure. All right, y'all take care. I'm going to catch y'all next time. All right. Peace. Peace.